Hi guys, welcome back to my quinceanera YouTube channel. Today's video is how to plan a quinceanera. The planning process itself is going to take at least a year, um, but if you have least time, don't worry about it. It can be done. You just have to double time it, okay? The first thing to talk about is the budget. Now, there is a free budget calculator on myquinceanera.net you can print out, and it has all the big ticket items you're going to be needing for your quinceanera, from the dress, the limo, the food, um, the band, everything is on there. Print this out, have a seat with your parents at you know dinner, or whatever, and talk to them and ask them about how much money you can spend for each item. The next thing on your quinceanera to-do list is to decide the date of your quince. Now I'm sure you're just like, duh, I'm gonna have it around my actual quince birthday. Well, consider the weather. Is it rainy season? Is it really hot? Were you planning to have an outdoor quinceanera? The second thing is, are you gonna be having family members fly in? If you are, it might be easier for them to fly in during breaks from school. A lot of people don't want to, don't want anybody missing school, so it might be easier to have it in during the summer. Now, the third thing and your first money-saving tip is: Have you considered having your quince on a Friday or a Sunday? I know for a fact vendors across the board drop their prices down a lot. We're talking at least saving thousands. So when you're looking at dates, keep that in mind. Maybe if your budget's not that big, maybe changing the date to a Friday or Sunday might be a great way of having the exact same quinceanera you would have on a Saturday, but half the cost. So now that we have your budget and your date, the next thing to decide is, do you want a quinceanera ceremony? It's not required, but I think it's a beautiful tradition to link it back to your religion. The ceremony it will be a blessing upon you and it's a chance for you to give thanks to God for 15 years of life, for being surrounded by your loved ones, for anything you're thankful for. So with the budget, the date, and your ceremony decision ready, the next thing to start looking at is venues. There are a ton of venues. You can book anything from um, a hall to a rancho. You can even book um, aquariums or yacht parties or have it in your own backyard. The way you're gonna be deciding what venue would be best for you is first and foremost your budget and secondly about how many guests you'll be happy. Remember my money saving tip. Check out what the prices are for a Friday and Sunday versus a Saturday. So as you're planning your quinceanera, it's gonna be time for you to be taking bigger decisions in your life and bigger responsibilities. The first that I think is really important when you're planning your quince is deciding who your main padrinos are gonna be. The main padrino should be somebody that you feel comfortable with talking about not only your religion, but also life. It should be somebody that you look up to or somebody you can trust and that will be there for you as you're growing up to back you up or to help you make decisions about college, friends, anything that you need help with. They're gonna be pretty much like a second set of parents. Um, usually if you're gonna be having a ceremony, they do need to be married, so just take that into account. And they also, as padrinos function, as helping you a little bit or a lot, whatever, they're, whatever they can, monetarily with your quince on your list is to decide the guests, the amount of guests, so it can be anywhere from 50 people to 500 people. The decision is up to you and your parents. I would definitely suggest getting a notebook and start writing down the names, telephone numbers, and addresses. And if you don't have their addresses, start sending text messages to get their address so you can send an invitation. Now comes the fun part about planning your quince. Time to decide your theme and colors. This should be something that reflects your personality. So if your favorite color is pink or blue, and then for themes, you have an endless amount of themes you can decide on. So you can do, um, example, a masquerade. You can do Candyland, a sports theme if you like soccer or baseball. You can also do Cinderella, which I'm sure is gonna be really popular since the movie just came out. You can also do Under the Sea and maybe book an aquarium as your haul. So there is, like I said, an endless amount of things you can decide on. Definitely try and be original, throw in your little twist to any theme that you have seen. And if you need more ideas about themes, you can visit the website again, mykinsingita.net. I have a whole list of themes there and there'll be more videos on that too. Now that you have an idea of what you want your theme and colors to be, 
The next thing to do is to look at decorations to reflect your theme and colors. Um, decorations, we're talking about centerpieces, backdrops, um, you know, either ice sculpture, anything that you can tie back to your theme. So if you're not going to have a lot of decor, my tip is to go ahead and book a lighting company. Lighting can change a hall completely. It can go from plain white walls to blue, purple, pink, whatever ties into your theme or whatever your favorite color is. Next thing is food, probably my favorite subject ever. So if you already booked a hall that provides the food, you're going to be going to a tasting, deciding your main dishes, appetizer, all that good stuff. Cool. You don't have to worry about anything except for going to a tasting. If your venue does not provide the food, time to start looking for a caterer. You know, make sure you go to tastings and decide what type of food you want. Do you want Mexican, like birria, or do you want Italian food, or do you want buffet style, or do you want service? That's a lot of things that you're going to have to talk to, to with the caterer and see what they're going to be providing and what you want them to provide for you. Um, you should also, as a side tip and good idea, have like an appetizer table and fruit table. They are a great way of helping your guests get snacks while the food is being passed out. Quinceanera planning is so much fun, so just make sure you're enjoying all this. Make sure you're enjoying the decisions. Don't get stressed out. Relax, you know. You still have time to make changes. So the next thing to do is start looking at your quince outfit, your dress style. Do you want a sweetheart cut? Do you want strapless? Do you want straps? You know, is it going to tie in with your theme? Are you having like a charro theme or... A Victorian style theme that you have a you know a dress that can go with that they are you know if there's a lot of themes there is a lot more type of dresses out there um, there's designers like Vizcaya and Disney collection you can have your dress custom made or you can pre-order it off of a catalog and then customize it to you know maybe add sparkle or whatnot Remember, this is about your personal style, so have a lot of fun when you go quince dress shopping and a lot of patience because there is a dress especially for you out there. When you go quince dress shopping, make sure you don't take a lot of people. You don't take kids because you're going to get frustrated or they're going to be running around. Just take your parents and maybe your best friend, a cousin, a tia, somebody you feel comfortable with that will support your decision on choosing your dress. Dresses start anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars. If you're having it custom, custom made, it might be a little bit more expensive. Um, so keep that in mind when you're choosing your dresses. Like I said, make sure it's something you're comfortable in and you feel beautiful in. Now next is the shoes. Most of the party you're going to be wearing flats or sneakers that are customized with your name and your info on it. And then you change to heels at your party. If you can't walk in heels, when you purchase your heels, start practicing them. If you want to do your bodicing your heels, which I don't suggest, but if you want to, practice doing your bodice and heels, break them, and the last thing you want to do is a day Ricky to put on brand new heels and then you'll have blisters. No fun. Now jewelry. Jewelry is something that has to accent the dress that you're wearing. So if your hair is going to be up, you might want to wear dangly earrings. If it's going to be down, maybe just some studs. Um, the necklace, if you're, you're, like your ceremony dress is covered up, you might not need a necklace. But you might want a necklace for the party. So make sure you have those separated. New trend alert is getting two quinceanera dresses. One dress for the ceremony where it's either a lighter color like white off white or pearl and a lot more covered up. And the second dress is for your reception so it's brighter, it, goes, it ties in with your theme. Now moving on from your dress and your quince outfit, the next thing to decide is your quince court. Oh, this is a lot of fun. So a quince court is any way you want it to be. I've seen quince courts with nothing but girls, nothing but guys, couples, you can have two, three couples, you can have 15 couples, or you can have seven couples plus you and your main chambelan. 
it's really up to you and what you decide. I've seen a lot of people that don't want girls because they say they take the attention away from the quinceanera. And then I've seen quinceaneras where they want to include their best friends or their cousins so they have girls and boys. Another new trend, and this time for your quince court, is hiring professional dancers. Now, my opinion is do it. I think it's awesome because if you're not really into dancing, if you don't know how to move your body, a partner that does know how to move will make you move nicely. Um, so definitely something to consider. When you're getting your quince court, it's always nice to make them feel special by asking them to be in your quince court because it's a big deal. But also letting you know that there is responsibilities if they accept. Like they'll have to be at practice on time. They'll have to be an outfit that they have to buy that you get to choose. So you'll choose what dress the girls to wear and what tuxedo the guys will wear and the colors and all that good stuff. So when asking them to be in your in your quince court, I think a really cute idea is to send like candy grams. So you can make these at home or you can buy some cards and then just um, write inside if they want to be part of your quince court. A lot of the information you should be giving them is the date of the quinceanera. That way they know that they can't be out of town or you know on vacation. So make sure that they're available for that day. The last thing you want is for them to say yes and then tell you no because they're going to be on vacation the day of your quince. The court has three main responsibilities. The first is accompanying you your, the entire day of your quinceanera from the ceremony to the reception. They're pretty much your VIP guests. And with that, they also are responsible for learning the dance of the waltz, the dance of the surprise dance, and also the grand entrance. When you're hiring a choreographer, you should also ask them what type of packages they offer. I know choreographers that offer packages where they choreograph your grand entrance, your waltz, the surprise dance, and the father-daughter dance, as well as a brindis dance. What is that? Yeah, it's super cool. So instead of just doing like your regular cheers to the quinceanera, they choreograph your brindis to a really cool like hip hop song or something more dancey. And it's really nice because everybody will be like, wow, that's something I haven't seen. Something you already know, but you should be reminded anyways, a quinceanera is only once in a lifetime. The only way you're gonna get to relive it is through your video and your photographs. So the next thing to do is hire a professional videographer and a professional photographer. Packages start anywhere from about $1,000 upward to two, dollars $3,000. The price just differs in where you want, in what type of package you want. For so planning timeline, we're about seven months before your quinceanera. All that I've said so far is about the last, five, the first five months that you should be doing stuff for the quince. Now the next thing to do is start choosing and printing out your save the dates. You can either have like card printouts or magnets. I think magnets are a lot better because people can just put them on the fridge and keep remembering that it's um, your quinceanera day. You want to send these out at least six months before your quinceanera. I know it seems like really far in advance, but there's some people that have to request time at work. There's other people that have to book flights and hotels. So you want to give them as much time as they can to make sure they're able to go to your quinceanera. Also take a look at invitations and maybe get a package so they match. Um, you always want to make sure it goes back matching to your theme. And for the invitations, the main information you have to include, your name, your parents' name, the main padrino's name, the church address, the church name, and the time of the ceremony. Then you, for the reception card, you want to include the reception hall name, the address, the time that dinner will take place, and how long your dance will take place. Inside your invitation, it's not required, but a lot of people like to put like a nice quote. Um, they also like to add in sometimes the honor court, so your court's name, your main chambelan's name, and other padrinos that you have. Like I said, you don't have to do this. Now it's time to decide your quince day transportation. Are you going to go in a Hummer limo, an Escalade, a party bus? The newest trend is the party bus, which is really cool because you can walk in there. So a reception is nothing without good music, but what type of music you're going to have at your quince? You can choose from a banda, a DJ, or a mariachi, or all three. But remember, just remember your budget, and that way you can choose. Now for something sweet. Your cake and your dessert table and your candy bar. Um, this is something that is going to be a lot of fun. 
you have to decide what type of cake you want if you want fondant or cream and you want strawberries or chocolate so always go to a bakery or someone that you have been referred to that way you know the taste the cake tastes good and you're gonna be doing cake tasting lucky you make sure your, your cake ties back to your thing um, if it doesn't you can also match it up with your colors the next thing is your dessert table so a lot of people have dessert tables so in case you want to get like um, cupcakes or macaroons that's your choice also the candy bar has become like the latest craze which i think is super cool because people can go and get a little bit of sweets and you can have it designed also to tie back to your theme i've also seen a newer trend which is called the candy station or the candy cart that was super cute and you can rent those as well so for most quinceaneras the day of the quince is the first day they have their quince hair done and their makeup done don't do that make sure you guys pay for a trial and have your quince do and your your makeup done before you can always use it like as an excuse to do your pre photo shoot and video shoot that way the makeup and hair doesn't go to waste so by now you should have had all your games at court reply back to your invitations and deciding if they have accepted or not. So it's time to look for your quinceanera court outfit. The girls wear dresses either short or long and the boys wear tuxedos or they can dress as chaperos or marines, whatever ties back to your theme. If neither of those tie back, then a standard tuxedo with a tie color that matches your dress is sufficient. Make sure that the cost is cost friendly because each dama and each chamelan will pay for their own outfit. Now for the damas, when they go for shoes, I would definitely suggest going with flats because a lot of girls don't know how to walk in heel yet. Now the last thing we're going to be talking about are the traditions that you want to perform at your quinceanera. One tradition is the last doll. This doll is presented by the madrina and padrina of the doll and it's given to you to signify the last doll that you will have now that you have become a woman. Changing of the shoe is another tradition. So you'll be most of the day in flats or trucks or vans or Jordans, whatever you like. Your dad will change your shoes from your, your flats into heels. The other tradition, which I love, I think it's really beautiful also, is crowning. So the entire day you should be having your hair done with a tocado or maybe just like some sparkle in your hair and then at your reception you'll be crowned generally the people who crown you are either like your grandma an aunt your mom some uh, usually a motherly figure that you really love the next thing is your official presentation this is when your mom and your dad will take you hand by hand and will present you to all your guests as a young woman generally they'll walk you around your hall like with the inside of the dance floor and right after that, you guys will say a speech. You as a quinceanera have the responsibility of making a speech. It doesn't have to be long, it can be short. The highest points you have to hit are being, you know, thanking your parents for being able to give you quinceanera, thanking your guests for being there, and just something that you wanna, you wanna put in there that's a little bit more meaningful towards you. And then your parents will also say a little speech, you know, thanking everybody for for their apoyo and for them being there. Caught my Spanglish there. I just really want to thank you guys for watching this video and I hope it really helps you out planning your quinceanera. For all this and more, you can visit www.myquinceanera.net. Make sure you leave a comment below and be entered to win a brand new Betsy